SpaceX never fails to capture the headlines with one groundbreaking achievement after another. Their transparency and engagement with the public contrasts starkly with competitors like Blue Origin, which, interestingly, hasn't conducted a single public rocket test to date. And it seems like SpaceX's dedication and positive public image is truly paying off. Recently, they landed a game-changing contract. But before we dive deep into that, make sure to subscribe to our channel for all future updates on SpaceX's missions, including the much-anticipated Starship. SpaceX secured its first contract with the U.S. Space Force called Starshield. This isn't just a minor contract, we're talking about a year-long deal. Now here's where it gets even more interesting. All of this will be built upon their Starlink satellites. That's right, SpaceX will be utilizing their trusted technology for this government project. Their objective? To support 54 mission partners including the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. Musk shed some light on this project, indicating that while Starshield will be under the Department of Defense Space Force, Starlink remains purely civilian and won't engage in combat scenarios. SpaceX's foray into the defense sector isn't new. The Pentagon has previously utilized SpaceX's rocket services for their operations. Furthermore, SpaceX's role in supporting Ukraine during their conflict with Russia has been notable, supplying essential internet connectivity. But it hasn't been smooth sailing. Challenges arose when Starlink couldn't penetrate Russian-occupied Crimea, affecting Ukraine's strategies. With this move, Musk finds himself, perhaps unintentionally, in the geopolitical arena. SpaceX and the Federal Aviation Administration are in conflict again. While it isn't the first time the two entities have locked horns, the current situation seems to have a different flavor. Historically, their disputes have revolved around launch permits, environmental assessments, and safety protocols. But this recent clash suggests deeper issue. It all started when the FAA put out a report that raised many eyebrows. They warned about space junk dangers from satellites in low Earth orbit by 2035. The gist of it? If all the planned satellites are sent up, falling space junk might hurt or even kill someone on Earth every two years. Reading between the lines, the report indirectly points fingers at SpaceX, given their ambitious plans for the Starlink satellite constellation. The FAA estimates a staggering 28,000 hazardous fragments from deorbiting satellites, and their associated rockets could survive re-entry by 2035. These numbers, alarmingly, align with SpaceX's aggressive Starlink expansion strategy. SpaceX, in recent history since 2019, has already launched 5,000 Starlink satellites. With the green light from the FCC, their target is set for 12,000 satellites. But that's not all. They're eyeing global permissions to have an astounding 40,000 Starlinks orbiting our planet. Given the implications, SpaceX is, understandably, on the defensive. David Goldstein, a principal engineer at SpaceX, didn't mince words. In an Octa 9 letter addressed to both the FAA and Congress, he criticized the report calling it a product of deeply flawed analysis that leans heavily on assumptions, guesswork, and outdated studies. The undertone was clear. The company believes it's being unfairly targeted and is prepared to challenge the findings. The situation got more intense when the FAA's report stated that SpaceX's Starlink satellites are a major concern. According to their findings, Starlink is responsible for over 85% of the danger to people on Earth from falling space junk. That's like saying if 100 pieces of junk were to fall from space, 85 of them would be from Starlink. There's also mention of a potential aircraft downing accident due to falling debris in 2035, with an estimated probability of 0.0007 per year. SpaceX asserted that their satellites are meticulously designed and constructed to fully disintegrate during atmospheric re-entry at the end of their operational life, a process that is being successfully executed. The Aerospace Corporation responded to SpaceX's concerns by stating that their technical team is in communication with SpaceX and others to review and update the data. 
They emphasized that the FAA had approached them more than two years ago to conduct an independent assessment of the collective risks tied to satellite re-entry. Now, SpaceX isn't taking this sitting down. They're throwing shade at the debris claim. According to them, the assessment is based on outdated NASA stats and is meant for a different satellite operator. They're also not too thrilled that the report hones in only on Starlink, ignoring other players in the space like Amazon's Project Kuiper, OneWeb, and China's Low Earth Orbit Systems. They're emphasizing the need for a broader perspective. In the FAA report, Starlink gets name-dropped a whopping 28 times, while Amazon's Project Kuiper makes a guest appearance just four times in the data tables. When asked about all this on the 10th of October, the FAA kept it cool saying they're reviewing the letter. As for the Congress squad who got the initial report, no immediate comments from their end. This whole report, by the way, is Congress bound. It's a response to a 2020 rule that had the FAA put under the microscope, checking out how they can better handle safety risks tied to launches and re-entries. The FAA closes by stating, even if they tweaked their rules, they wouldn't cover all the re-entry risks. Why? because their jurisdiction doesn't stretch to payloads launched from beyond the U.S. borders. So, they're playing it real, but they're playing it by the book. And it certainly seems like there may be more trouble on the horizon for SpaceX. NASA's eagerly anticipated Psyche asteroid mission has also successfully launched yesterday. Overcoming initial concerns about unfavorable weather patterns emanating from the Gulf of Mexico, the mission saw SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket flawlessly lift off from Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, propelling the Psyche spacecraft into space. Earlier, weather predictions for Thursday had given only a 20% chance of favorable launch conditions, prompting NASA to opt for a safer launch window on Friday. This decision turned out to be wise, as Friday's launch went off without a hitch, despite initial concerns. Just over 60 minutes post-launch, the Psyche spacecraft successfully separated from the upper stage of the Falcon Heavy rocket. This momentous event was captured on NASA's video stream, which showcased the spacecraft venturing into the vast expanse beyond Earth. Its mission? A six-year, multi-billion mile journey to the asteroid belt nestled between Mars and Jupiter. Jubilation echoed in the control room at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California as the mission's managers received the first signal from the now space-bound craft. The target of this mission, the asteroid named Psyche, has intrigued scientists for nearly two centuries. Psyche, named after the Greek goddess of the soul, was the 16th asteroid to be discovered. For the most part, early observations depicted it as a mere star-like point of light orbiting the Sun. However, starting in the 1960s, astronomers noticed something peculiar about Psyche. Its coloration bore a striking resemblance to iron meteorites that had landed on Earth. This revelation came to light through telescope observations, as noted by Jim Bell, a professor of Earth and space exploration at Arizona State University. Bell, who is tasked with leading studies of the asteroid using the spacecraft's camera instrument, further highlighted that radar reflections from Psyche appeared brighter than other objects in the asteroid belt, hinting at its unique metallic composition. This mission seeks to unravel the mysteries of Psyche and provide deeper insights into this celestial enigma. That's all for the video. Thanks for watching, and make sure you subscribe for all the latest on SpaceX.